Hello, everybody, and welcome to Out of the Short Box. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Today, we're going to be talking about comic book couples and the impact they've made. So sit back, relax, get out your chocolates, and let's enjoy a conversation on the best comic book couples. Okay, so what I'm basically going to do here is do a top ten type scenario. Um, it's going to be a top ten, but I'm uh, that's how I had it set up in my show notes originally. But I want to talk about comic book couples. Um, this is going to be a little bit different podcast because it's basically just going to be me talking and giving my opinion. Um, I think that comic books uh, are very impactful and in great pieces of literature. And one of the ways that it holds as a piece of literature in my mind is that comic books have this innate ability to have us become introspective. And most great pieces of literature do that. They make us look at ourselves. They make us go inside. But they do entertain us, and they let us do, escape into a different world, and, and they broaden our imagination. But all great pieces of literature, those that have stood the test of time, all great characters, have us look individually to ourselves. Uh, we become introspective, and we can relate to the characters. We see bits and pieces of our characters, and I think one of the ways that comic books have masterfully done that over the years is they have instilled relationships in the comic books. And those relationships have brought out certain traits, certain personalities, certain struggles, and the characters that we can relate with. I think sometimes, too, we can even look at our own relationships in that way and put it. So I'm going to do, like, my top ten. Of course, this isn't set in stone. Many different fans have their different versions on who their top couples are, who their favorite couples are, and I'm not including all couples in comic books because if I did that, I could talk forever, and I want to keep these podcasts, you know, down time so you can listen to them on your drive home, so you can, you know, if your work allows you to listen to, to music while you're working, you know, maybe you can put it in the Spreaker podcast and listen to me go on about comic books so that's what I want to talk about today so number 10 uh, I actually my number 10 who I like is Hulk and Kyra Uh, the Incredible Hulk all of y'all most of y'all know the Incredible Hulk if you're listening to this podcast uh, you know who I'm talking about there but many of you probably don't know who I'm talking about with Kyra Uh, there was a uh, story arc that was called uh, Planet Hulk a uh, number of years ago. Uh, beautifully written story. I've talked about it before in my very first podcast, actually. But uh, Planet Hulk uh, happened where, when Hulk crash landed on Sakar, which some of you all have heard that before because if you've watched Thor Ragnarok, you've heard of Sakar. However, in the comic book, uh, Sakar was a little bit. Actually, it was a drastically different world from what we see in the movie. Um, the Red King was an evil person. He wasn't that uh, goofy Jeff Goldblum type character that we've seen in Ragnarok with the comedic relief. Instead, the the Red King of Sakaar was very vicious, uh, very much a dictator. Um, and Sakaar had an essence of Rome, uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, there was a lot of influence there. But Kyra was a what was called a shadow warrior. She was the king's uh, basically shadow bodyguard. Um, she actually ended up falling in love with the Hulk after he led the rebellion. Uh, Kyra realized the evils of the Red King and seen that Hulk was a uh, even though he was a monster and he was vicious and he could smash things and he tried to be a loner and everything else that. Um, the Hulk had an innate sense of doing the right thing that he did deep down, even though he was rough on the outside and very grumpy a lot, um, that he cared for people, that he cared for the people of Sakaar, and that he was willing to lay his life down for his friends. And Kyra saw that, and of course they fell in love. And one of the most beautiful moments in the book is... Uh, the the regents come before uh, Hulk and thank him for everything they've done and they're offering him many different things and he says, you know, a king needs his queen and he looks at Kyra and takes her hand um, and then they go into a back room and Kyra is about to conduct uh, the wedding ceremony that the shadow people have and uh, she sets a, a little small little incense type fire up 
and uh, she asks the Hulk if he will kneel with her, and he says yes, and the Hulk kneels down, and Kyra mentions how she needs to know all of him, that she, if they're going to be a couple, that they don't need to hide anything, and that uh, she needs to be able to know all of him, uh, giving him that type of communication. And uh, then suddenly all what happens is uh, the Hulk turns into Bruce Banner, and she's shocked, and she looks at him in, in complete disbelief, and um, she, you know... Bruce tells her he wanted you to see all of us, all of me, and uh, she leans over and she kisses Bruce Banner, the Hulk in Bruce Banner's form, and then you see Bruce turn into the Hulk again. So it's just a beautiful montage on how uh, real loving relationships um, let we can see the ugly in each other, we can see the anger in each other, we can see those traits that might not make us appealing, and, uh, but also uh, they can, it's a good relationships not only sees our strengths and our positives, but our ugly sides and also our weaknesses, and, and we see all of the couple, and it was just a beautiful uh, onslaught of that. Kyra and Hulk's relationship was beautiful. They had, a, they had a child together. It ended in tragedy with the death of Kyra, um, on Planet Hulk, and of course, Hulk had his revenge for that um, because it was actually uh, Tony Stark's fault and a couple of the others, um, Doctor Strange even, and he ended up getting his revenge. And it's a good storyline. So, um, but uh, the beauty of it all. Now with the Hulk, a lot of people will say, "Well, what about you know Betsy, uh, B- Betty Ross?" Um, you know, they've been the, a long-time couple. And that was more with Bruce Banner's side. and Because and, uh, the Hulk stayed away from Betty. And the Hulk was jealous of Betty and a lot of theirs. So that's why I really like the Hulk and Kyra relationship. Moreover, uh, with Betty, even though Betty's been the longest term. And Bruce Banner will always have an affinity towards Betty. And I know they got married at one point in time in the comic book line. Uh, but I think the Kyra one was a better fit uh, because, you know, Bruce saw Kyra as well and the Hulk saw Kyra as well and they both approved. Uh, the Hulk really never approved much of Betty. There there was a little bit of time where they did, but it wasn't very strong. Um, so that's where uh, that came from there. So that was number 10. My number nine best couple has to be Storm and Black Panther. Uh, man, or talk about a power couple. But uh, they were just wonderful, wonderful. Um, and you want to talk about just a, a couple who has been through through the mill. Uh, you know, T'Challa making such sacrifices for his people, Wakanda. Um, at the same time, though, he lived he lived much in isolation for a long period of time in his life. So he he saw some of the monstrosities of man being the superhero that he was. But when Storm came into his life. Uh, it brought a lot of balance in there because Storm had seen uh, even more than T'Challa had uh, the racism of men, not just because of the color of her skin, but that she was a mutant as well. Uh, Storm is a phenomenal character in that, and not only is she one of the most powerful characters in, in the Marvel Universe, but she is also, uh, again, just uh, she's got a lot of inner pain in her. And to see them, t- the two, and their happiness, and leading people, and taking a stand for the rights they are—it's one of the most beautiful couples um, I've ever seen in, in comic books. Uh, the next one is probably what I would consider the cutest couple. Uh, my number eight is Starfire and Dick Grayson, or Robin, or Nightwing. I guess I should say Nightwing because he became Nightwing when um, it was the Teen Titans. Uh, it's been. Uh, on again, off again with uh, Dick Grayson and and uh, Coriander uh, Starfire, um, who you know Dick calls her Corey, and uh, it's a been a beautiful relationship. Um, they even were going to get married. Uh, Raven kind of lost her mind and put it into that, so they never did go through with the ceremony. Uh, but it's always been a beautiful relationship. The two love each other. Um, very much so, and they've been on again and off again in the comic books, um, but Starfire's always had a special place in her heart, 
uh, for Robin. Uh, Starfire's had other romances as well when her and Robin haven't been together. Uh, or Nightwing. I, I keep saying Robin, but I mean Nightwing. Um, when her and uh, Nightwing hasn't been together, um, Starfire's had, but not with other real superhero types. Uh, Nightwing's been her her consistent on that. Um, but it's neat. It's a cute relationship uh, because Corey doesn't know uh, anything about uh, Earth relationships. You know, Corey's a, a straight alien. Um, you know, she came here in her teenage years and didn't understand much about uh, our culture. And so it's neat to watch the cuteness of that on how uh, one of my favorite scenes in the old uh, cartoon was her and uh, Nightwing were on a Ferris wheel and uh, there was fireworks shooting off in the distance and uh, Nightwing was holding her hand and Corey mentioned how when they saw explosions like that on her planet they knew war was coming and she asked him are you sure uh, are you sure we're safe and, and Nightwing says you, there's no safer place you can be right now and uh, it was just a beautiful uh, type of relationship there uh, Nightwing's had uh, many different relationships in the comic books, though. Um, besides Corey, uh, a lot, and a lot of fans will argue on who Nightwing's better relationship is with, and I kind of go back and forth, too. But uh, Nightwing's also had a consistent relationship with Barbara Gordon, a.k.a. Batgirl. Uh, those two have been together quite often in the comic books, and it's a healthy relationship. Um, when, when they do, it's uh, it's been uh, a positive one in the light there. And uh, even when uh, Barbara was Oracle, uh, Nightwing was there. Uh, back and forth, though, because Tim Drake um, also had a relationship with Oracle as well when uh, Barbara was confined to the wheelchair and worked and operated as Oracle. Uh, going back to Dick Grayson, though... Um, Recently, in Batman and Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn had a relationship with Nightwing, which was kind of shocking and unsettling for a lot of us, but that's how DC likes, and it's kind of weird how that works, because we see that and we're like, okay, that's kind of cool. You know, it unsettles us at first, and but then we kind of set in, but um, it's still been kind of unsettling, so uh, that's pretty much it on that number eight entry but yeah starfire and uh, nightwing are one of my next one number seven uh for me is jane foster and thor uh in the comic book version of jane foster and thor um jane fell in love with both of his personalities fell in love with two men i guess you could say and it made it made for a more interesting comic book um because in the comic books, Thor had a secret identity. In the movies, you know, it's just Thor. Um, he had an alias that he went by when they tried to sneak him around. But in the comic book, um, it was a secret identity. He would go around as Donald Blake, and he would, uh, a doctor, a medical doctor, and he would hit his cane on the ground, and his cane would become Molnir. I've talked about that in the history of, of Thor in that podcast in there. But in the comic book, uh, Jane actually falls in love with both men. She falls in love with the character of Donald Blake, and she falls in love with Thor. And it isn't until much later on that she realizes that they're one and the same. Uh, so it was kind of a cool uh, little throwback to the whole Lois Lane uh, and Superman type thing, which we'll talk about later on. Um, but they did that, and it was just a beautiful type relationship and the way Jane Foster and Thor's relationship has grown um, has been phenomenal um, they've uh, gone through a lot of rough patches and of course Jane Foster took up uh, the title of Thor uh, for a while in the comic books and just recently uh, gave it up in the current run of the comic book it's kind of tragic uh, Jane uh, Jane agreed a long time ago with Thor that they needed to go their separate ways the relationship wasn't working out but they remained friends and of course, Thor's always cared for her. Uh, but uh, Jane ha has come down with a, a terminal cancer. Uh, Jane is currently battling that right now in the comic books. Uh, she's lost her hair. 
Uh, she, it seems like she's getting healthier with the more comic books uh, with each edition that comes out. Uh, but that's where her current run is. And Thor's relationship right now is actually pretty cool, I think. Uh, they did it with the when they re-did uh, the Avengers, when they re-opted and did Avengers number one this past year in 2018. And uh, Thor has developed a relationship with She-Hulk. And it's cool there because um, in the last comic book uh, interaction between She-Hulk and Thor... Um, they went out kind of on their first date, and uh, She-Hulk was saying, "You know, you only like me for my wild times when I'm when I'm the Hulk. You don't love me completely." And Thor said, "No, you know, I love both of you." So it's it's been a really cool, interesting. It's still early in that relationship, but I think uh, Marvel's done a wise idea on pairing those two together and I think it's going to be neat to see um, what happens in that relationship and where the writers take it uh, number six is one of the most famous couples in comic book history and that's Jean Grey and Cyclops uh, Jean Grey and Cy- uh, or Scott Summers if you want to call C- Cyclops Scott Summers um, but uh, their relationship has been a tumultuous one but it's been a strong one nonetheless they both love each other uh, they both have a child um, who recently in the comic books and the uncanny x-men uh we learned is causing a huge trouble um it's similar to age of apocalypse um they're going into the age of x-man uh with what their son has done and gone from there uh so i definitely uh say pick that one up um and get it up it, like i said it's a, it's similar to age of apocalypse so if you're a long time comic book fan <sighs> I hate to tell you this, you can take it or leave it. Um, That's my only beef with that right now. It seems like they're recycling stories, and I hate that Marvel's doing that. But but it is. It's basically Age of Apocalypse all over again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, pick it up, definitely, because it's a a good storyline, and you'll like it, and it goes from there. But Jean Grey and Cyclops... um, uh, they've had, like I said, uh, on again, off again relationship. Uh, Jean Grey's had a relationship with uh, Wolverine as well, uh, and kind of freakish. So, Jean Grey was adopted uh, by Professor X when she, you know when she was a teenager, when she was young, in her young teens, and um, uh, back in the early age, of Marvel kind of messed up. But uh, Professor X actually fell in love with Jean Grey too, who was telepathic and came real creepy and Jean Grey found out and she stepped aside but her love of her life has always been Cyclops has been Scott Summers um, they've always loved each other always found a way to be with each other Jean Grey and Wolverine Wolverine was very much in love with Jean Grey as well but he would always take a back, uh, back seat to Scott because uh, Wolverine always kind of knew that Jean Grey loved Scott number five is one of the most infamous couples in uh, comic book history and also one of the most frustrating couples in comic book history and that's the relationship between Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne uh, Catwoman and Batman so um, it was introduced really the relationship really did have its beginnings at the very beginning of Batman in Batman number one um, you know like I said that wasn't the first Batman title, uh, you know, because it was Detective Comics number 27 when Batman was introduced, but in Batman's first, uh, first actual Batman comic book in Batman number one, which introduced us to the Joker, it also introduced us to Selina Kyle as Catwoman, and Catwoman is flirtatious with, with Batman at that point in time, and all throughout the comic books, it has been a constant, uh, where Batman has this crisis of faith inside of him because deep down he loves Selina Kyle. Deep down he loves Catwoman. Uh, Deep down he loves her and he cares for her. And he he sacrificed himself. He's sometimes may have done even questionable things, even on his own ethics, for his love for Selina. Um, They've been together many, many times uh, physically, physically. even in the comic books, there's been many uh, kissing scenes. And then just this past year, Tom King uh, teased us <laughs> in Batman number 50. It was supposed to be the wedding, we even uh, which I liked it. I enjoyed it. And, and as a DC fan, I understood what was going to happen. It caught a lot of people by surprise, and I don't know why. 
unless it's just been new comic book fans, DC a long time ago put down a rule um, that the Batman family, the Batman characters can't get married. Um, they, you know, they set that up when Batwoman was going to get married, Cassandra Kane. And the reason why is because of the character. And that's what Batman number 50 kind of reflected to, which Batman was going to get married. It wasn't Batman that was leaving this time. Bruce was left at the altar by Selina, by Catwoman. So spoilers if you didn't know, but um, Catwoman actually um, left Bruce stranded at the altar. And uh, it was tragic, and it's it's had its impact, and that's what we see that now in the current run on how uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman's trying to uh, get over uh, the grief and the loss of, of Selina and his life. Um, but it's been an on-again, off-again relationship. And, and Catwoman even said in her note uh, to Bruce about why she left him at the altar and the reason why she said that if we were together, you would be happy and you would no longer be Batman. And she said Gotham and the world needs Batman more than they need um, a happy Bruce Wayne. And uh, it's been something the, the two's been struggling with. In the Catwoman title, you can see Selina struggling with the memory as well. So they'll be back in each other's lives eventually. It's just this time it will take some healing because they came very close to it this time. I mean, Catwoman bought a dress. They had the bachelor and the bachelorette parties. I mean, it was pretty neat with to see the prelude and the planning that Selena was doing and getting ready and uh, being there for Damien and, and, and everything else. It was really neat how stuff was coming along. Uh, my number four relationships is uh, Sue Storm and Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. Uh, they're the longest-running couple in comic book history um, and one of the most phenomenal relationships there is. Um, you know, Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, and Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, of course. Uh, their wedding was one of the biggest events in comic book history. Uh, it was one of the best-selling uh, events. Uh, they had, uh, um, of course, it had the infamous scene there at the end where uh, Stan Lee uh, wrote himself and Jack Kirby um, trying to get into the wedding, uh, but Nick Fury and his agents denied them uh, <laughs> admission into the into the reception. And you see them walking off in the um, in the last panel, and Stan Lee saying how they'll have their revenge in the next ish. Uh, but their wedding uh, had a bunch of enemies show up, Dr. Doom was there a lot of people tried to ruin the wedding um, but a lot of the superheroes showed up though too in attendance of the wedding and that that's what was real cool of course I mentioned how Nick Fury and his agents were there um, and they were giving protection at the wedding but you also had uh, Spider-Man showed up you had Thor showed up uh, Iron Man showed up, it was really neat to see the outpouring of all these um Marvel characters show up for the the wedding of uh, Sue Storm and and, and Reed Richards, um, and it was a uh, it, it was a tough time to go. Sue had a, a tough time because she knew how their life was going to be, uh, but they wanted to be married, and of course they had a had a son together, and uh, he's been. Uh, strong as well, a strong character in it all, and it's just been a, a good relationship between Mr. Fantastic and, and the Invisible Woman. And here recently, uh, in the Fantastic Four title, we finally, after all these years, we finally had uh, the wedding of uh, the Thing and Alicia uh, Masters. So it was finally cool to see that happen as well. And that's a beautiful comic book as well. Uh, get the, I would get the two issues. Um, I would get the issue leading up to the marriage and then the issue of where they did get married. I believe it was number five when they got married. I got the comic books um, at home. I need to look. But um, I put it on my personal Facebook uh, on the, the night of the bachelor party, um, there was uh, the thing was sitting on a curbside with uh, Johnny Storm, uh, the Human Torch, and he was telling Johnny how to not coaching him to not make the mistake and wait so long uh, to get married to find the love of his life, and it was just a beautiful 
comic book. So my number three one is Mary Jane and Spider-Man. Um, kind of a given. Um, of course, Spider-Man had Gwen Stacy before, and he's also had a relationship with Black Cat. And it's been uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Peter Parker is 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 Peter Parker. He has he has a hard time with his emotions, and he has a hard time with with what he's going through in life. But Mary Jane has been uh, consistent in his life. Um, Mary Jane came shortly after Gwen Stacy's death. They had started seeing each other as friends when uh when Stacy was still in, in Peter's life. Uh but um Aunt May set uh, him and Mary Jane up and uh, they've been on again off again. Um they've been together as a couple, um you know, married at one point. Um and uh, they're back together in the current run and it's just a beautiful thing uh, to see Mary Jane and Spider Man. Number two I think a lot of y'all will be surprised that I put this one as number two, but I'll explain my number one. My number two is Lois Lane and Superman. Yes, they're my number two couple, even though they're the most famous couple in comic book history. Um, I've got one I think is more beautiful at number one. Um, Lois Lane and Superman, uh, they've had a tumultuous relationship as well, because Lois Lane actually fell in love with Superman first before she did Clark Kent. And I think that's always been a little bit of an underlying issue. Now, n- now Lois knows that Clark is Superman in the current comic book run, and they make it work. Um, but there's still a little bit of that struggle on responsibility, on, um, you know, on, you know, and Superman's called to duty and everything, and Lois is left behind. And you see that now even in the current run. Uh, Lois did an article um that was kind of thrown in Superman's face. Uh, she did an article on Sanctuary, and uh, they're arguing over that. Uh, Jonathan went to, with his grandfather uh, to be trained, and you can see Lois's struggle with that, and you can see Superman's struggle with that. And Lois came back and didn't tell Clark right away. And so it's been on again, off again, tumultuous type stuff, but they've always had a consistent love for each other. Superman's always loved Lois Lane. Um, now he was with Lana Lang, and also people say he hasn't always loved her. He has always loved Lois, even though he wasn't with Lois all the time. Uh, in the new 52 run, we had uh, what everyone thought was the dream couple, and that was uh, Superman and Wonder Woman. I never did like that pairing. I know a lot of fans liked it. A lot of fans thought it was sweet. Um, and I guess they had their moments, but I just wasn't that big into it. I always enjoyed Wonder Woman with Steve Trevor, um, and that's not my number one couple either, um, because the Wonder Woman Steve Trevor thing has been tumultuous too. Um, a good strong one in comic books, but I'll go ahead and mention that relationship as well, because that's a relationship in comic books that we see. But let me go ahead and talk about my number one. My number one is probably a comic book that not a lot of you all have read. Um, I highly encourage you to read it. Uh, yesterday, on February 13th, on a Wednesday, um, the Mr. Miracle trade paperback came out that Tom King wrote uh, with Mitch Gerard. I, I don't know if it's Gerard or Gerard. Mitch, if you're listening, I know you follow me on Twitter. I apologize if I slaughtered your last name and you need to correct me on how to say it. But uh, Tom King wrote it, uh, and Tom King is currently writing Batman, doing a masterful job on Batman. Tom's just a great writer. He's also writing the Heroes in Crisis uh, run, which is fantabulous. Um, definitely uh, pick up that. Um, it talks about uh, PTSD and the superheroes and where they need to go in an introduced sanctuary to us, and it's just a beautiful run on that one as well. Tom, being a former CIA operative, has a little bit of intake on a lot of stuff like that, and um, he definitely puts it in his writing, and it's just masterful. But he took up Mr. Miracle. He did a 12-issue 12, uh, 12 uh, edition in 2018 with Mr. Miracle, and it was, it was one of the best, if not the best, launch of 2018. I mean, 2018 should be Tom King's year. He did a masterful job with Batman. He did a masterful job with Mr. Miracle. Uh, Mr. Miracle, hand down. The storyline was just so good. And if you don't know who Mr. Miracle is, I'll do a bio about him. Uh, But um, he's uh, from New Genesis. Um, He's actually... 
people are. He's from New Genesis, but he lived in Apocalypse. He was uh, Darkseid's adopted son uh, through a deal with the All Father on New Genesis, and it was just a messed up, messed up deal, and, and it messed with uh, Scott's head a lot. So, but Mister Miracle is an escape artist. That's his superpower. Basically, he can escape anything and everything. Um, his name mentions that his name is Scott Free, so he gets away scot free on everything, and uh, it's beautiful. But he fell in love. Um, there on New Genesis with a woman named Big Barda. Um, uh, Jack Kirby created the characters, and Big Barda is a superhero as well. And they came to Earth uh, to live. And they live, I think it's still in Greenwich, Connecticut. I think that's where Tom still had them at. i got to look back on it and see. I'm ashamed of myself that I don't know that right away. But I still think it's still Greenwich Village. Um, but they... Uh, live there and uh, they have a son together and um, what makes this relationship so beautiful is they have never not uh, not been together uh, they've loved each other all the way and you see that in Tom's writing too they fight like a couple they have their disagreements like a couple but oh you can tell they love each other and it, the writing was just so masterfully done and Mitch did just such a good job with the with the illustration as well because you know a lot of times even if there's no dialogue you can look at how a face is is drawn and you can see the anguish or the worry or the concern in their face and that's what really brings about but Mr. Miracle was really uh, to me I was really introspective with the writing in Mr. Miracle because I, I seen a lot of myself and Scott um, in, in that article and the relationships that I've had in the past, how Scott was just worried about hurting. Uh, he didn't want anything to happen uh, to Big Barda or his son. He he put them above himself. and uh, and, and, and But he, Big Barda had to keep retelling him hey this is a team effort this is a team effort you know and i understand scott i understand where he's coming from and i'm sure some of you guys out there do the same way too and even maybe some of you women how you just love someone so much um that sometimes you get this idea of like i can't let them get hurt and you think you have to do it on your own forgetting that um the more powerful team is when you do it together and um that's what you see in, in Tom King's Mr. Miracle, but that's what you see in all the Mr. Miracle titles when it comes to Big Barda and uh, Scott Free Mr. Miracle, and that's why they're my number one couple. Uh, because if you look at them through the years, they've gone through so much together, and uh, they've remained consistent, um, unlike the other characters where, uh, you know, there was even a time, in, even in um, with... Uh, uh, Sue Storm and Reed Richards. Uh, Marvel almost had Sue. Well, Sue did. Sue thought about cheating on on Reed with uh, um, the Submariner. Um, that was in the comic books uh, with Namor. Um, you, you, there was a strong attraction between Sue and, and, and Namor, the Submariner, and that almost happened. But with Big Barda and, and, and Mr. Miracle, it's been consistent all the way through. Um, Scott's loved Big Barda, and Big Barda's loved Scott. And, uh, you know, besides the one instance where Big Barda was hypnotized by sleaze, and, um, but that never, nothing ever happened out of that one, and Mr. Miracle was there uh, to save her from that, too. But that's my number one couple. Uh, so what, what can I say about all this through relationships and comics? Um, read comic books and look at them and when you look at these couples you know even when you watch the movies even when you watch the comic book movies uh, look at the couples and then be introspective with it look for the parts of you that are in these characters because that's what the writers are really trying to get at because here's what the writers are ultimately doing and I'm speaking as a writer myself they put themselves in that character as well. They put bits and pieces of them, bits, bits and pieces of their personality into these characters as well. They just don't pull these characters out of thin air. There's something in there, whether it's something they're dealing with or something they've had in their life or somebody they know, something like that. They've put something into those characters to make them human and have human traits. So look deep down. Look deep down in these, okay? 
No, I can. Some people will say, well, how come you didn't mention Harley Quinn and Joker? Number one, that's not a relationship. That's abusive as all get out. That's what you don't want to be. But at the same time, look at comic books, and you can see people who have relationships like the Joker and Harley Quinn. Uh, People say, how about Iron Man and Pepper Potts? Well, in the comic books, they were never really that strong of a couple. They became a couple, but it's never really been a thing. In fact, I think actually Tony's strongest relationship has been with Janet Van Dyne. Yeah, in the comic books. Uh, You don't really don't see Pepper and Tony strong in the comic books. That's been more of a theatrical type thing. Um, Liz Sherman and Hellboy is the same thing. You know, Liz Sherman and Hellboy on the big screen have been a couple, but in the comic books, they're friends. They're really not there. But you can look at those relationships. You can look at them from the outside. You know, and you have Rogue and Gambit. You have all these other... um, You know, you have uh, Colossus and Kitty Pride. You have all these other beautiful comic book relationships. So read them. Read them and say, what part of me is in there? What part of the relationships that I've had in there? And then learn from them. Look at them. Maybe let it give yourself hope. You know, I look at the relationship between Hulk and Kyra, and I have hope for my future relationships. I look at the relationship between Scott Free and Big Barda and some of the dialogue that's in those comics, and I say, you know, that's what I want in my life. I want us just to have a simple night where we're just laying on the couch talking to each other, you know. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So pick up comic books, go read them, and let me say this, happy Valentine's Day, and I'll catch you in the next podcast. <laughs>